How do you grow vegetables all winter long? Today I was just out here pulling out some of the vegetables that I have grown over winter to feed to the pigs and I thought I would share with you 10 top tips for making sure that you have vegetables that you can eat all year long and that they survive and do really well. The first thing you need to do is make sure you're choosing cold hardy crops. So there are things like spinach, broccoli, kale, kohlrabi, cabbage, cauliflower, brassicas all do really well in the cold. Generally the darker the leaves of the plant the more cold tolerant they're going to be. Swiss chard is a, quite a soft leafed plant but is surprisingly resilient to frost. Number two would be to make sure you've picked a nice sunny spot. When you situate your tunnel house or if you've decided just to put some low tunnels down for the winter make sure that they're facing east to west so that the broad side is getting the most sun that they possibly can. Number three is add some additional heat if you need to. This can be in the form of some filled water bottles or even if you've got a larger tunnel house you can fill up big water barrels and sit them in there and they soak up the heat of the sun over the day and release it overnight. Other options include heated wires which you can put in the ground or you could set up a heated table like what we have or you can run like an electric or gas or wood fired some kind of other heating. There are some passive greenhouses that use the heat from the soil and heat up the air as it comes through so there's all sorts of fantastic designs and if you're serious about growing food no matter how cold it gets some of those might be worth looking into. Even if you're heating your greenhouse you need to make sure that you're opening it up at least once a day and add some ventilation and that will stop it getting too stuffy and too humid and you ending up with fungal issues. Just be sure to shut everything up again before night time so the space has time to warm up in that last little bit of sun before the frost hits. Number five is to add extra layers of insulation so be it adding extra layers to your tunnel house so you can have a double filmed or even triple filmed tunnel house. Sometimes you can even get ones that blow air between them to keep those two layers apart and they are very well insulated and work wonders even if it's really heavily snowing outside. Other options are to add extra hoops within a large tunnel house or to do a smaller version of a double filmed tunnel house outside just a low tunnel but with two separate layers. The extra air gap adds all the difference with the insulation. Every layer of protection that you put in adds about a zone to a zone and a half of hardiness to where you are. When you add a double layer if you're a zone six you could be growing plants that need like zone nine temperatures so it makes a really big difference. If you don't have access to extra plastic you can use frost cloth as that second layer. Tip number six is to plant in succession and get your seeds started really early. Plants really slow down how much how quickly they germinate and how quickly they grow depending more on the length of light hours more than the temperature. The shorter your days are the slower the plants are going to be growing so make sure you allow for that in your calculations. Do you grow vegetables over winter? What are your favorite varieties and how do you do it? Let me know in the comments below. Tip number seven is to grow in the ground rather than growing in containers. Containers are great in the summer, they heat up faster so you'll get a quicker earlier yield but in the winter time you want that thermal mass of the ground so you want to be planting your plants in the ground and if you do have containers you need to bunch them all together and maybe even wrap the whole outside with some insulation of some sort to try and minimize their exposure to the cold air. Number eight is to actually water less. During the summer when plants are actively growing and they've got a lot of leafiness and the air is really hot they go through a lot more water than they do during the winter and if you are over watering in the winter you're increasing your risk of frost damage to the plants. Just give them enough but not too much. If you're finding that like us we have an automatic grey water system and we do the same amount of laundry be it winter or summer in fact we probably do more over the winter. Ground in there was getting so boggy. So we've actually turned off the grey water system in there over the winter. The other tip with water is to make sure you're watering earlier in the day. So that gives the time for the soil and the plants to dry out before the frost hits again later in the day. Tip number nine is to use plenty of mulch. Mulch helps keep the soil warm, it keeps the moisture in and means you don't have to be watering quite so often. We like to use wood mulch but you can use pea straw or even lawn clippings works perfectly good as well. And number ten it is to keep the air moving. This is different to ventilating. So ventilating is to exchange the air from inside to outside but what I'm talking about here is to keep the air actually moving especially over particularly cold periods and this will help minimize the amount of frost damage that any of your plants get. So placing a fan in there to blow across the ground will keep the air moving and keep the cold air off the ground and allow the warmer air from higher up 
in the tunnel house to circulate down. So I know we're coming to the end of our winter season and these veggies in the tunnel house have done us really well, kept us busy over the winter. And I know that half of my watchers live in the Northern Hemisphere and you guys are heading into your winter. So now is the perfect time to start considering what you're going to be doing for your winter growing. Mm -hmm.